Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast. And Randy, uh, introduce yourself a little bit about who you are, what you do, sir. Well, great. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks for having me. So my name is Randy Chafee, and uh, I have a rep agency called Source One Marketing. And uh, we represent product into the post frame metal roofing world and starting to get some product into the uh, the shed world. Awesome. And so uh, uh, been doing this for four plus decades. And, oh, wow. Uh, oh, Okay. I use four plus decades because it sounds way better than darn near 50 years. Uh, because I assume at four plus decades, people will make the assumption that I started when I was seven. Yeah. Right. And I'm only 47. Right. That's, that's my, my mindset. Well, right? I thought you were around 46, 47 ish. Yeah, for wow. sure. And yeah. Next, next, next Dr. Pepper's on me. Yeah, Just absolutely. <laughs> you got it. 10, two and four. Right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. perfect. So no, uh, y'all have a podcast too, which is really cool. So, you know, tell us a little bit. I about will. That. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's uh, building wins live and uh, we're approaching 200 episodes. Nice. We do once a week. Uh, we used to do them live back in the, uh, Back in the COVID days, when I couldn't travel anymore, because to back up a step, I'm a I'm an old school road warrior. Yeah. I've, I've established a new uh, hashtag of recent in the last two or three years called hashtag Road Warrior Randy. I used used to use Road Warrior Randy, but so what happened is one day I couldn't travel anymore. Right? We all had yep. that. Yep. And when it when we realized that the two weeks was not true. And there's right. going to be who knew how long. <laughs> I, how am I going to see my customers, my customer friends, and potential people? So I started doing a lot, upping my social media game a yep. lot. Yep. Uh, and, and started guesting on some podcasts and enjoyed that. I said, you know what? I think I could do this, and this would be a way to be out there. Absolutely. Uh, and so we did them live to start with because I'm home all the time. I might as well do them live. I yep. uh, soon found out, though, that when we got back to traveling, it's just it's hard to schedule myself with a pretty uh, aggressive travel schedule around 10 states, guests, uh, and so we we still keep the building wins live as part of the the, the slogan or the lo, uh, the logo the, the 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 moniker if you will but but we record and do them uh, to the industry but we also you know you've been on the show which we yeah. appreciate we bring other people in that you might find of interest like uh, um, we I got some lieutenant colonels from the different military branches coming in to talk about what they learned in leadership under fire. And those kind of things. So that's been a lot of fun. So, yeah, thanks for asking. It's uh, so once a week, Building Wins Live. You can find us uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. And then on Mondays, we drop a podcast version on all the usual Spotify, iTunes, Apple, yep. whatever. Yep. So All the places. All the places. All the places. That's what yeah. we do. No, it works good. And that, that gets out to a, a, a big audience. And I, I kind of want to ask you a question yeah. related to that. You're talking about like the lieutenant colonels and things like that. We've kind of branched out and brought on some different people on. And, and trust me. I know what you're talking about on the demands of the schedule and that we're, we're traveling in a camper. We're trying to put two a week out. You're right. talking about putting three a week out. And I'm like, man, I thought I was ambitious. That's awesome. Um, and, and I think about like my guest and, you know, we do podcasting over the shed industry, you know, mm -hmm. and the shed industry is really broad now, isn't it? Well, it's exactly. like, where does it, where does it stop and another begin? Like we're, we're at a shed shop right now and there's a, uh, you know, his, his buildings out back. And some people would say that's his shed. Right, but then there's right. also sheds out front. Exactly. So you can't really, you exactly. don't know where one stops and starts. And it seems like post frame and sheds they almost kind of blend. They do. They do, uh, Shannon. And, and that's what's interesting about why I want to get more involved. I've always been a post frame building industry and yep. metal roofing guy. But I'm putting more effort and energy into uh, into the shed world. Yep. Because you're right. They Some guy sheds a 30 by 40 yeah. building out back, right? I mean, right. It's, you know, we all think of sheds. As portable, a lot of people portable, think portable. Yeah, you know, twelve by twelve is a big one, right? Yeah, that, yep. that's what we think, or yep. a lot of people think, and that's not the case anymore. And, and some of these sheds that people are building, you know, they're they're they're, they're cabins. Oh yeah, and absolutely. Little getaways and backyard play places for the kids. So go down to Texas, they're they're sixty foot, and they're moving those things on trucks, and, exactly. and you know, you know what I mean. Like it's it's kind of wild to think about the whole big picture of everything. But you're talking about having like lieutenant colonels and things like that, and I've I've always kind of went in in-house industry-wise, like getting people that are, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but we've a, we've actually had some guests come on recently and been talking to some different guests like that. Tell me, where do these guys add value when you're not just talking to somebody who's in post frame? Tell me how those guys add value. It's, it's a great question. And, and they add value because 
a lot of times people don't know where to go find these people mm-hmm. on their own. They don't have the time to go find these people. That's something that we can do right. as, as podcast hosts. And I'll give you a good example. One of my my favorite guests, next to you, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I got to watch what I say. You're going to cut me off already. <laughs> I, I, I smell an edit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you smell an edit. <laughs> but, uh, but one of my favorite guests, he's been on five times, is Ben Gay the Third. Ben Gay is the he goes by the moniker but well established the living legend he wrote the book series and, and published and pushed out the the book series the closers okay one of the biggest okay. the biggest selling sales book in history he and i've become really good friends after having him on the show once and what the value he brings is to talk about all of the things the people we've heard he he worked closely with Dr. Napoleon Hill think and grow rich okay yep. zig ziglar yep. right prime the pump yep. uh, uh uh earl nightingale okay wow what a great yeah. word. i mean personal friends with these guys mentored yeah. by these Big guys names. and so yeah. he brings all these stories and all this great input on how to be better at what you do that i think is a benefit to all of us yeah because I don't care what industry you're in or what stage of life you're in, whether it's it, it could be personal, it could be family, it could be church. We're all in sales. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, absolutely. We're all in sales. And so I like to bring people like that. And a- along with that, since you gave me the opportunity to talk about that, some, some people asked me one time, how, how did you get somebody like Ben Gay to come on your show? Mm-hmm. And it appears that you've become pretty good friends with Ben, and, and we are. As a matter of fact, uh, a little shameless promotion, which you can edit yeah, if you go want. For it, go for it. I'm writing a book. Yeah, for sure. It'll well, be honest, I wanna, yeah, I want to know more. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it in a minute if you'd like. But but Ben was very willing and has wrote the foreword for my book. Okay. Which is very cool. Yeah. But so people recognize that that um, but no, I become he I consider him a good friend. Yeah. And uh, how did you Randy, I don't understand. How how did you and this guy's a pretty big deal. And so it's a simple thing in the world of sales, right? So sit down, everybody, because this is this is this is monumental. I ask. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's a it's a surprise, right? Right. But I ask. Yeah. Hey Ben, it's Randy. I follow you, follow each other on LinkedIn and a couple other places. I love what you do. Read your book eight thousand years ago. Just wondering, what do you think about jumping on my show someday? Love to. I'd be honored. Yeah. That's awesome. What was the worst case you'd have said? No. Well, worst case, you'd have never responded at all. Right. No harm, no foul, right? Yeah. But, you know, if you don't ask, you don't know. Exactly. You know, that's going to be a no if you don't ask. Exactly. That's always been my approach. Exactly. You know, I sort of did that with, like, uh, she shed Cheryl. You 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 oh, seen yeah. she shed Cheryl yeah. in the State Farm commercials, mm-hmm. and I, I follow her page and YouTube and stuff like that. I comment on her stuff. We actually talk back and forth quite a bit. And here she's out in Hollywood, and she's she's played in all these different mm-hmm. roles and and stuff like that. And I just I said, man, uh, I don't. I saw her in the Super Bowl commercial. Oh, okay, you know, with like John Travolta, and I was like, hey, you know, wouldn't it be cool if she'd come on the show? And she saw it, and she's like, yeah, let's do it. Yep. Like, wow, who, who would have known that that would have exactly. worked out? But, you know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to work a couple of cool guests right now that I, th- I think are cool. And I think all of my guests are awesome to have on. I think everybody has a story. Uh, some of these guys probably have larger platforms. Uh, the COO of GoDaddy. Oh, dot sure. com. So I'm like, yeah, of course, that can add a lot of value, you know. So I'm hoping we get him on, but it's kind of, mm-hmm. you know, still in the works or whatever. It, it, and hopefully it works out. And then, of course, Randy Chafee. Well, you know what I mean? Exactly. I mean it kind of goes without saying. Well, it, it does. <laughs> it, it could go well without saying probably. But. At iFab LLC, our passion is welding, fabricating, and design. That's why in 2015, we begin to commercially market our product to the shed, portable building, and mini barn industry. Our product is primarily used to build trusses. Our truss saw system cuts boards in one motion, and our truss press system installs and presses the gusset plates to a finished truss. We custom fabricate jigs that assure perfectly symmetrical truss setup without error. We also have other products designed to help your shed builder increase quality, efficiency, and save money. Our precision door tape will build your custom doors square every time and easily adjust to build any door. For products like these or other custom fabrication services for your barn shop, visit ifabllc.com or call 563-422-7496 or simply email us at ifabllc at gmail.com. 
but that, <laughs> that what you're talking about is is very real. It adds value, and I, I try to get people from within the shed industry. Be be surprised at what people from even outside at times have to offer from an outside in perspective, because we just get so stuck in looking at our same thing, same players, same people over and over. So it's really good to be able to expand and be able to get input and data and information and expertise, opinions, and all this from people outside. So. It does because the, any industry, and, and talking specifically now to the to the shed industry, it's there's more out there than just that. Yeah. And so I found that the more people and the broader my network is, I learn something from everybody every time I talk to them. If you do this goofy thing, and this is funny to say with two podcast hosts talking, but if you talk less and listen more, yeah, right? If you really do, and I know that's been said a million times by people probably way more well-known than us, but if you just listen to these people, there's something to learn from everybody. I turn down very few uh, requests to, uh, to, to, to guests on a show. Right. I turned down very few get, uh, our opportunities to, to LinkedIn with somebody on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Uh, you know, there's some that you can tell is going to be a, a, a spammy, scammy kind of thing. Yep. And, yep. and yeah, I know you need to go away. Yep. But, but outside of that, I don't care what genre you operate in. Yeah. You're going to bring something that's going to be a benefit to me. And, 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 and if I can learn, uh, th- that's, that's an hour here, an hour there, a benefit to me. And then maybe I can bring that to, to my audience. If we were doing a soundbite, that's as good as one as I could think to create because I really feel like Deanna says all the time, like, how do you do that? And I'm like, what? She's like, you sit down on a on a Walmart bench and you know where the guy's from, mm-hmm. what he does for a living. And I said, well, I, I know this is going to sound kind of like strange, like you said earlier about ask, just ask them, but I take a genuine interest in people. Sure. So, like, I believe everybody's got a story, and sometimes that's shed-related, sometimes it's not. We were talking to our server last night, so we, we've got the opportunity to sit here at John Newcomb's place here in Cadillac, and he's so gracious to give us a space today. We went out to eat dinner last night with him, and then a bunch of uh, shed haulers and shed guys are going out tonight again yet, but we, we sit down, and we're talking to the waiter, next thing mm-hmm. you know. And he's like, what do you guys do? Like, doing a podcast. We're in the shed industry. Yeah. He's like, I just bought a shed. Oh, shit. You know, I mean, exactly. it's, I found this story interesting. Exactly. You know? Well, you know, the, the funny thing with that is we all heard the, the what is it, the, the six steps from Kevin Bacon or whatever that is. Or you, you're, I, I don't think I got that word yeah, right. No, but, I know. Uh, six, six, six. Oh, gosh. What, what is, is it? It's um, six degrees of six, separation. Six degrees. Yeah. And I think in today's world, it's probably a degree or two. Yeah. With all the social media and <laughs> sure. all that's going on, I've often thought that this would be a fun thing to do, is literally see, meet somebody just in the middle of nowhere and say, hey, you got a few minutes? And see if we could talk long enough to find somebody we both know. Because in today's world, I, I think it's closer than it used to be. Uh, it, but, it, but, I, but I just find it, it really interesting what you said was sitting on a Walmart bench. I'm big with that if, I, I, if I'm out traveling, I like to sit at the bar at Applebee's or someplace, and yeah. I don't want my own little table yeah. because I like to talk to the the barkeeps. That makes me sound old, yeah. but I like to talk to the people beside me because every, like you said, everybody's got a story. Yeah. And two things: people generally, if you are interested and friendly, they want to tell their story. Yeah, they love to tell their story because most of the time nobody cares about their story, so they love to tell their story, and. Then you get to tell your story, and all of a sudden you've had probably, I think about this often, I'm going to leave this bar at Applebee's, 99.99%, I'll never see this person again in right, my life. Right, But I had an hour that, I'll, that, that, that was something I can never replace because I just learned something new about somebody, and there's a snippet in there somewhere. That makes you, sense. You know, just connecting with John here, I'm sitting here in his office, and I look down, and I see a St. Louis Cardinals cup. Oh, and sure. I asked him, I said, you're a Cardinals fan? And he's like, oh, my daughter lives in St. Louis. She used to live in Marion, Illinois. I'm like, Marion, Illinois is 35 minutes from my hometown. Like, what? You know, so you that conversation comes up. Next thing you know, you probably know a lot of the same people. Exactly. Networking exists. Business happens. You know what I mean? Like, you'd be exactly. surprised because, you know, you, you begin to build trust and information and this this large network. So that that's always why I encourage people to come on the podcast. I always try to 
um, make the guests feel welcome mm-hmm. and know that, you know, they're the star, but it's not really about bragging about you and your story. A, a lot of guys are conservative, so they're like, I don't want the attention on me. <clears throat> and I'm like, well, you know, a lot of the conservative guys, if you, if, if, if you live that lifestyle, then you know that there's a deep meaning and sense of the word community. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And community comes by iron sharpening iron, by exactly. getting together, having conversations, having lunches at Mexican restaurants, exactly. which I visited so many Mexican restaurants <laughs> in this country. You don't even know. Well, well, well the one that we're going to visit tonight, if, if, if I end up getting here, which I'm going to try, I pre, again, appreciate the invite, sure. is a good one. I, 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 you know, it's, and it's, it's funny thing when you reach out to people, because a funny story about this restaurant, a good customer of mine, uh, I was, I was getting into town and I made a post, uh, getting into uh, Cadillac this evening, going to go next door to this great Mexican restaurant. Eight minutes later, after I posted this on social media, yeah. he sent me, he said, he said, dude, are you really? I said, yeah. I says, why? He says, I'm 45 minutes from there. I says, I'll save you a spot. Get over yep. here. And so communications in today's world and the ability to, to meet up with people is, oh. is, is, is never been like it is. Nowadays, there seems to be so much to choose from when it comes to offering rent own. So many companies have all these promotional items that go along with the rent own program it's hard to know where the rent-to-own program ends and the shed company begins. At Country Classic Rentals, we believe in doing business the old-fashioned way. Old-fashioned doesn't mean we're not capable. It means we still value a handshake. And we believe when you say something, your word means something. There was a time when you could look someone in the eyes and say what you mean and mean what you say. We have built our company from that philosophy. At Country Classic Rentals, you can be confident that when you produce an RTO contract for your customer, we will make sure that the customer is taken care of when they become our customer. Country Classic Rentals is ready to have exploratory phone calls with shed companies in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, and Tennessee looking to partner with a trusted and resourceful RTO partner. If you're looking for an RTO partner who will work for you, give us a call at 937-483-4588 or call toll free at 800-649-5667. Just ask for Stan, and we'll be happy to have a conversation. Country Classic Rentals, the freedom of ownership. Man, we could probably talk for three hours. But I'll tell you what, let's let's go down a let's go down a road here. Let's try to okay. travel a little bit. Tell me about Randy, who he is, how he got started, sure. where where all everything began uh, forty years ago when you were just sure. seven years old. Yeah, well, yeah, thank yeah. you. I appreciate that one. Do not edit that one. Yeah. That's important part. That may be the only important thing I said. Uh, and, and I'll say that's the only lie I'm going to tell you because it is, but that one is a lie. But so, yeah, so I grew up um, a lot of years ago. I mean, I, I don't hesitate. I'm 67. Okay. Uh, I grew up on a farm in mid Michigan. Nice. And uh, only child adopted at three days old. Greatest parents you ever had. Uh, life was good on the farm. And so my hero was my dad. And so we did all the farm stuff and, and then he started a business building and selling grain bins and then selling and building post frame buildings. So I come from a hammer, nail, and a screw gun and, yep. and, and carrying two befores over my shoulder and, and the whole thing. It's, 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 uh, it's not like I just started selling this stuff one day. I kind of grew into it naturally. But so I grew up on the farm and my first lesson, and this is going to give you a little insight into my, my, my book I'm writing. The high, okay. my, it's going to be called The Journey to Hybrid, My Journey to Hybrid. <clears throat> and on the farm, I think I was eight years old. I remember sitting in the kitchen, and my mom had the typical farm meal, a salad based steak, mashed potatoes, five different varieties of, uh, of, of vegetables. And I'm looking at my Daisy BB gun over there, and I'm thinking, as soon as we get done, I'm going to go shoot some rats out in the chicken coop or the hog house. This will be fun. My dad says, hey, Rand, which is uh, short for Randy. That's what he always mm-hmm. called me, except for when he was mad that it was Randy and and you knew. And I knew. And then I was really <laughs> in trouble was Randy Lee and uh-huh. the occasional Randy Lee Chafee, which meant I don't care what, I'm heading towards the right. woods or something because this is really not going to go well. But I had a couple of those. But he says, hustle up, grab a couple holes out of the garage and meet me out front. All right. I wanted to go shoot rats, but I'll, anything with dad was good, right? So we, we short story, we, we go to the bean field and we're hoeing the weeds between the rows. And the first... 15 minutes, I'm cool with this. It's, I'm out in the field with my dad, right? But I'm, I got the mindset of an eight year old, which is pretty short. It's still pretty short spot, mind span, actually. But I go, why aren't we doing this? 
you, you run the cultivator, right, between the rows. You just cultivated a couple of weeks ago. I, I don't understand why we're doing this. And he goes, it's real simple, son. He said, we put a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of money into planting these crops. We have to take care of them. Every weed that grows is taking some energy away from a stalk or two of beans. And so if we're gonna if it's worth planning and doing that effort to put the to, to plant the seed in the ground, we want us we want to get the best harvest we can get. So we gotta do the little things. And obviously it's stuck because it's like what, fifty years late no, sixty years later almost. And it still and it still is in my head that if it's worth doing. Yeah. So that was where my start was. And uh, so I grew up on the farm. He sold seed corn for Pioneer Brand Seeds, one of the big names out there. Uh, I used to help him with that. Then we got into the building business, and I helped with that. When I got out of high school, uh, that's where I wanted to go, so I went right into that with him. Figured out I, I like the selling part better than I did the, the actual building part. Um, at the time, I think it was because I was just lazy, but uh, as it turned <laughs> out, I just really did enjoy it. I, I, I figured riding around my car and talking to people, uh, I always like to talk to people. Yeah, And so... We did that, and then after a number of years, it hit a point where uh, uh, the business was struggling a little bit, and it made sense that he wanted to shut it down, and it made sense that that's fine with me. Went to work as a in a lumber chain for a while, okay, uh, selling a lot of the stuff that I sell nowadays. Maybe different brand or different manufacturers, different brand names, but the same stuff. And I did that for a few years, and I got into purchasing for a while buying the same products. Yep. And one of the things I talk about a lot that I really remember from this job in purchasing is I talk about live it, love it, own it. I say that on every show I end with. And another thing I say almost every day to somebody somewhere, love what you do and do what you love. And I was not. I mean, I barely wanted to shave in the morning before I put my tie on. That was bad. They didn't wear a tie and a suit to work and all that. Yep. Great company, great people, great product, but I hated the job. Learned a lot. But I realized I'm not loving what I do at all. And because the sales was in my blood, working with people, developing, helping them. And so I, I, I had an opportunity to get it back into sales as a company guy um, for a company called Cannonball, which is still out there. Actually a competitor of mine, you know, in, in, in the world today, and, you know, as you move and things change. But great people, great company. Um, and then an opportunity came to become a rep. And I, uh, I had a mentor of mine that uh, really said, you need to become a rep so you can control your own destiny. You can rep multiple product lines. You can be your own boss. Uh, talk about taking a step under the, uh, I don't want to call it the danger zone, but you got to have a lot of confidence and a little nuts, <laughs> which I have a little bit of both. Um, probably a little heavier on the nut side maybe, yeah. but, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. But uh, the good news is I talked him into letting me become a rep which meant instantly no more salary, no more health insurance, no more company car, no more reimbursements. It's you sell something, we pay you. Yeah. Eat what you kill. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Eat what you kill. And, yeah. but, I, but I was that much nervous and scared and a whole lot, yeah, let's go. Let's do this. But I had a couple other manufacturers that I'm with today, uh, SD Fastening and, and, and Marco Industries, that were sitting there ready for me to jump in. So I jumped in. But I remember the first... I was so excited about this, Shannon, that, yeah, let's do this. So I had some established business, but I didn't have, I thought there's got to be some business with these other manufacturers, right? I just never bothered to ask because I was young and dumb and excited. So I, I asked a few days after I got started, this few weeks maybe, so so how much base businesses are here right now? And I remember one of them said, about 75000 I go, well, it's not a lot a month, but it's a start. He go, no, 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 a year. Oh, Oh, that's not good. So basically, I started from zero, and that gets you that gets your attention. Yeah, that gets you fired up to go work every day. And uh, if you want to eat, if right? you want to eat, right, eat what you kill. And if you don't kill anything, you don't eat. Yeah, they don't just send you checks because of well, I could have or should have or would have, but I didn't. They didn't do anything they hear. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, they, they don't pay on any. They don't pay on didn't. That was a great presentation. They really loved the product, but they just didn't buy. Guess what? They don't send me a check for that. It's funny how that works. Yeah. I always felt they should, but it yeah. didn't work. Funny so, how that happens. But anyway, so that's how I I really, and that's where I built my career for, for years was, was being a relationship builder, being a trust builder, 
and just hammering the roads. You know, almost being like a politician from the, the standpoint of shaking hands and 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 hugging people and kissing babies and pizza pie lunches and and donuts and and just building that relationship one day at a time, one phone call at a time. And and I did figure that one thing out early, Shannon is, and and next I'm gonna write a chapter about this in my book about incrementalism. Almost everything is incremental. You never typically get the business just like that. And if you did, you either price too high or there's a reason why you shouldn't be selling them. Man, I'll tell you what, you are right in my wheelhouse right now. I literally had the conversation last night about, you know, even whenever I worked in rent home and different things, that it was never really about coming in and trying to get relationship or get a business that day. And if you did get business that day, how it was almost certain that it wasn't business, it was always going to be what you wanted. But it, it can happen, but it was rare. Building the relationship was definitely the key. And there's relationships you'll build that you'll never do business with. I mean, exactly. it's just the way it works. But you, you, you're not taking zero away. You're not netting nothing. You might not be getting paid. But you're getting, you know, something. You're getting a friendship. You're getting a relationship. Exactly. You're getting a network. You're getting information that's valuable to you, information that you can give back in return. That was huge for me. It's still huge for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is. And, and see... That goes right down something that that's that I talk about a lot and believe is if you just you build the trust, you build the relationship, yep. you do what's right, yep. you take care of people, and not without expectation. The the good will come if you do the right stuff. Right. And so and, and I I had a young guy getting involved in sales once, and he said, When did you go from being pretty good at sales to maybe better than pretty good? I mean, I, I think I do pretty good. Decent at what I do. I said, I stopped selling. I said, I used to be a sales guy. I don't even like that term. I used to be a sales guy. What I really was focused on the minute I met you, Shannon, is what can I sell you? How quickly can I sell you? Because I need to make some money. And as soon as I stopped doing that and start building the trust relationship, and is if you don't need what I have today, then I shouldn't sell you anything. We'll just build the relationship and see where that goes. Because you know what? Worst case, you might recommend me to somebody. Or someday you will. Or if nothing else, like you just said a minute ago, if nothing else, you and I just become pals. Yeah. We have a relationship. Yeah. And that's a good thing. You got a network. If nothing else, there's. I've had many people recommend me mm-hmm. uh, in some way, shape, or form in another, uh, another area of, of help that someone was looking for. And I've done the same in return. Mm-hmm. So you built this network that says, hey, now is just not the time. Right for you know our relationship to work together in business and, and so be it that's exactly. fine but how you leave that relationship says a lot about who you would have been as a partner right if you leave on these really nasty terms or if you you know what i mean yes. like you and you know insightfully do these things it's gonna that's gonna follow you as opposed to saying hey i'm gonna be the same guy when you show back up right exactly <laughs> exactly and you know there's a term that gets used a lot in the sales world and it's so right most customers can smell commission breath Oh, a mile away, yeah. right? Yep. They see that weakness in that sales guy. Or I think it's a weakness. They don't see it as a weakness. They see it as an arrogance and a don't care about me as a customer at all. All they care about is whatever commission they're going to earn off of this. You, I, and I never want to skew that to where we have goals. We have budgets to meet. We have forecasts to meet. We, have, we need to sell product. But we need to do it the right way. Yeah. Because if we don't do it the right way, you get that one really nasty. I, if I was really smart, I'd have knew how many letters, but a long, many lettered word starts with a T, which is a transactional, right? As soon as you take anything in the transactional, we're going to lose. We don't win at transactional deals. We win at relationship deals, yeah. my opinion. Yeah, couldn't agree more. It's something that we've tried to establish around the industry, different things that we've worked in, things we've done, ideas we have, things we want to continue to do. Um, you know, just being ambitious and really finding... You know, for me, it was a struggle. We talked about this. We've got a mutual friend, Gary Bontrager. Exactly. And Gary does a, a podcast as well, too, Mindset Growth. Mm-hmm. And we, we've both been on there. Yes. And Gary's been on here. Ray's been on. And, uh, you know, I, I really see, like, that connection on Facebook where we're talking a lot. You know what? I'm the odd guy out. I ain't wrote a book yet. yet. Well, like, I You wrote a book. Still, Ray's I'm, wrote a book. I'm, Gary's I'm, wrote a book. I'm not official yet. Okay. I, I'm, I'm writing a book. Okay. But I did get it from a, a buddy of mine, Brian Monahan, who's wrote a book. My little thing at coffee, or coffee is for authors. So he said, he's, I'm going to send this to you so that you can't renege now on this. You got to get yeah. the book wrote. So, but anyways, but you, 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 you got a lot to write about, buddy. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I just realized like, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm in left field here, aren't I? 
but you know what all these experiences do become valuable um like I, I even remember one of my favorite things i heard a pastor one time say this he says uh you know failures of you know about success it's the path to success if you fail you know uh, get up and if you fail again you get back up and if you fail again you get back up and if you fail again you write a book over all the ways not to succeed so <laughs> there you go that's a good point you're, you're narrowing point. down the ways you're, to be successful well you are well you think about it if you fail enough you're going to find success somewhere there yeah. because i think there is a reality if you're not failing you're really not trying enough stuff right. you're just not Failure is just part of success. It's not, it, it, it's, it's not necessarily a negative thing. We feel it is at the time. But the real beautiful thing is every failure, if you pull a win out of it, what did I do wrong? What could I have done differently? That is a win. You throw on that virtual win pile, which I believe in. Yeah. You throw that win on the win pile and you move on. And guess what? You start over from a place 2% better, 10% better, right. 40% better. But you're better. The, the place you start from is better than you were the first time. Yeah. And sooner or later... You're gonna get it right, and so I think it's important to 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 to. to I, I know there's a statement that gets used a lot, and it's it sounds wrong, but I understand what it's meant. Is failure way to success, right? And that doesn't mean you're gonna go out and attempt to fail, but you're gonna try things, and 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 if it fails, you start over. Ted, was it Ted Williams that says, you know, you can. I'm, I'm in a sport, I'm in a career that you fail seven out of 10 times. And exactly. if you do, you'll be in the hall of fame. Exactly. You know, so it, it's, exactly. it's, the, it's really about your perception, how you look at failure, how you embrace it, use it as a teaching moment. Hello, Shed Builder. Midco is celebrating its 15th year serving you, the Shed Builder. And we couldn't be more excited about serving you in 2023. What started as an opportunity to serve you with top quality steel and fiberglass doors has developed into an opportunity to serve you with many products. Midco offers pre-hung slab and overhead garage and roll-up doors, vinyl windows, aluminum shed and playhouse windows, several hardware items such as anchors, coil nails, T-hinges, drip edge, Z-bar, hurricane straps, T-handles, barrel bolts, handles and louvered vents and more plus they have an accessory line of products like board and batten molded shutters flower boxes diamond plate ramps and mr cool mini splits thank you shed builder for 15 years of serving your shed brand we look forward to 15 more to receive information on these products and more, call 270-247-7447 or visit midcoproducts.com. Midco Building Products, trusted American craftsmanship. So what's what's a what's a day in the life of Randy Chafee look like right now? Like what do you do? What's sort of all these years later, you've got these 40 years worth of experiences outside of writing books, outside of doing podcasts. You've got so much going on. You're a road warrior. I'm watching you on Facebook. You're all over the place. What's it look like? You know, it, it's, it's, my life is really <clears throat> hybrid. Thus the name, part of the name of my book, cause I'm on a journey and I'm a big believer in, in hybriding my life. Uh, my typical day would, uh, would be like today. Today is a very typical day in the world of Randy. I had, uh, read this morning, did a couple posts. One of them about our mutual friend Gary Bontrager. Yep. Read read read, read uh, somebody's book and snapped a picture reading his book. Helps promote what he's doing. Sure. Also keeps my face out there, right, in the world of social media. Lets people know what I'm doing. People want to know who you are personally, not right. just That's right. a product. Yep. Um, took uh, three or four customer calls, two or three follow-up emails. Got a quick walk-in. I'm on this 40 or 75 day hard, so uh, I have to do two a day. One has to be outside, so I did one early. Uh, jumped in a car, talked literally all the way down here to meet you. Uh, hung out with you and John here doing this podcast right now, and then I will be seeing several customers this afternoon, three or four more posts. My podcast will drop at 3 o'clock today, which just drops because of my, my buddy, pal, friend, and occasional bodyguard, Wes Wyatt, uh, makes that happen. Uh, so that'll drop at 3 o'clock. So I'll jump on that at some point and do a couple of, you know, responses to any, somebody. And uh, see a couple more customers and uh, very likely come back and meet you and some friends for dinner tonight. Yeah. And, and those kind of, that's a typical day. It's hybriding. It's, it's, it's social media. It's, it's virtual. 
uh, Zoom calls and team meetings, in face person to person with customers. Um, it's not just one or the other anymore. It's not just if I can't run the road today, I just sit at home and do nothing. There, there's so much opportunity. Why not chase it, right? Well, it is. And, and with all the technologies that we have at our disposal today, we can do, I don't know, 10x what we used to do. Yeah. I remember the days, I just going back because I've been around a day or two, of pulling up to the, the pay phones, which for the younger people, those are those little things that you, know, you punched a button and you entered a credit card or a phone card, yep. like 16 digits or some stupid thing with your hand hanging out the window with ice freezing because it's a short cord. And then, of course, who you wanted wasn't there. Well, call back in 10 minutes. Well, I said, here 10 minutes, but the guy behind me is waiting for the phone, so I'll be a nice guy. He'd drive up the road, and that took 18 minutes while well, the guy was in and out again. So I remember all those days. But then I got real technologically based and got a pager. <laughs> and then I got really, Shannon, this was this a big, when I hit the big leagues, I got a bag phone. Oh, the bag phone. phone, the car phone. bag phone. And so I was calling everybody. Hey, this is Randy. I'm calling you for my car. Look like you're calling in coordinates for, for exactly. like enemy fire. For, for enemy or something. fire, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Until I realized that Cellular One was the service. And that was about $980 a minute or something. It was like stupid. So I stopped doing that for my first month's phone bill, which I thought was going to be like 49 bucks. But they didn't, I didn't read the print that said that's for like nine minutes or something, right? So I'm, I've, I've got like a $400 bill the first month. I'm calling everybody, you know, because I think it's cool. I'm calling from my car phone. You calling for your car? Yeah, I got a car phone. I you could call from inside, but I'm calling from my car phone. Uh, yeah, I went to the car to call you. I'm pretty cool. But uh, Well, yeah. I am old enough to remember free after 7 or free after 9 or whatever oh, yeah, it was because yeah. me and Deanna were dating. So it was like, you know, talk to you after 9 or exactly. talk to you after 7. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I still remember the old party lines at my mom and dad's place. Oh, yeah. Where you'd pick yeah. up the phone and. Who's on here? Because I hear somebody talking, you hang it back up. Yeah. And then sometime an older, it would always be, no offense to anybody, but an older lady that was crotchety yeah. would go, you guys need to get off the phone. Somebody <laughs> else needs to use it. It's like, she's okay. Okay, Madeline. <laughs> you know. If your it. name is Madeline and you're crotchety, then that he's, was talking, crotchety he's talking directly, directly to you. Directly to you. So stop it. You change your name. Or ease up on people a little bit. I love it. Life is short. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, the, there's, there's, yeah, communication efforts, Facebook, I mean, YouTube, social media feeds, you know, all these things you can use also to move your business forward. I mean, uh, do you encourage people to do that absolutely. in their own, your daily business? Well, absolutely, I do. And, and, and I'm a big believer in social media today. Now, obviously, uh, websites are important. Yep. You need a website. That's a, that's a no-brainer at this yep. point. I look at social media, Shannon, like we may have looked at Facebook, I might get the years wrong, 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, where if you didn't have a website presence, you didn't exist. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be as bold as to say my opinion, Randy only. If you don't have a social media presence today's world, you're going to not exist to a lot of people. That is the go-to place for so many people. Sadly for their news, which is 98% always wrong right? and always skewed in either direction. Yeah. I have a definite side I fall in, which I never get into talking about on air. But both sides are wrong on half of what they put out. Yeah, most right? of what you see out there is kind of... It's, it's yeah. all skewed. Yeah. But with that said, social media, that's where people want to go to see what you're doing. And they, two things I'll say. If you want the younger crowd, and I'm going to say that is 40 and under for sure, they're not going to find you anywhere else. They're going to find you there, and they want to see you, and they want to see you often. My advice that I've learned, if anybody that follows me will see 90% Randy, the brand of Randy. I'm a big believer. I'm going to actually talk at, uh, oh, I just wrote an article, I think, in, in, in Frame Builder News or someplace about being your own brand ambassador. I think you want to brand ambassador your, your product, but you got to, your product is Shannon, yep. right? And yep. you need to promote that, which you do very well. And so people, you know, if, if all things being equal, as the old saying, uh, people buy from who they like and trust, what I have that nobody else has, I sell fasteners. I can make arguments all day what's the best fastener in America, right? I can give you the spiel if you want it. Uh, it's a fastener. It's a, it's a screw. I think it's better than theirs, but it's a screw, right? Yep. Not exciting. I want you to know I have them, but I want you to become, I want you to know me. 
Yeah. And I want you to trust me. Yeah. I want you to see me with my great grandson. I want you to see me out to dinner with my wife. I want you to see me walking and, and talking about some inspirational thing that popped in my mind so that you know who I am. Because sales is so sales. It's so salesy, right? Yeah, you know what is. I mean? Like you always hear the 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 common things like, oh, you know, like the, the sleaze ball sales guy mm-hmm. or you know what I mean? Like the used car sales. The, the old blue suit guy. Yeah, right? you yeah. know what I mean? And it's like be, because you hear that and now you've had, that's why we started creating video long ago, me and Dylan, uh, one of the guys that's uh, working with me on the, the, the marketing campaign that we did, one of one of several, uh, we kind of connected back some time ago on video and we were trying, we didn't put any, we didn't put any uh, words in the entire, we were trying to sell the shed without saying anything, but instead by pulling on the heartstrings or conveying a message mm-hmm. that was beyond just somebody saying, come on down and for, you know, you know, forty nine hundred dollars get mm-hmm. you shed today. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, if, if that's where you are, that's good. But I have this theory, and uh, uh, I feel like my cadence changes with your energy. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting I'm getting faster as we're speaking here because <laughs> okay. you you have so much energy. Uh, it's yeah, infectious. I, but so I have this theory that it's about communication. Just go with me here. One of my favorite podcasts is the Communication Guys. I like to listen to them over and over and over. And me and you were talking about, you know, I come out and do a lot of in-person interviews. Mm -hmm. And I love Zoom interviews. I love being able to do stuff, you know, uh, you know, via Zoom or the Internet. It works really good. I want to keep doing those. But part of what I want to do is be in front of people because it builds community, but it also builds communication. And the reason I think that is because the primary means of communication is in person right secondary means of communication is to be able to see uh from a distance you know whether it be video calling zoom all the different things that we're seeing nowadays you know um and then there's these other things that decrease communication after that like email and Mm -hmm. texting and we can't read the emotion and and the influx in somebody's voice so somebody might be saying hey don't do that and they might just be saying hey don't do that and i'm trying to warn you to give you a you know to benefit you but it could come across as don't do that right but we can't hear that so for me that's why uh you're talking about being able to get in front of people's social media i have this theory that says it's because people desire to see people they Mm -hmm. desire to communicate with them effectively and that's a primary means of, of communicating. That's why video is going to really dominate in a marketing space, I think, over the next Absolutely. 10 years. Absolutely. Well, you're just so dead nuts on with that, Shannon. And I look at it as an augmentation. The two, one augments the other. The in-person is best, always. The second best is doing some type of virtual where you can, like you said, you can you can read, you can see, you can have a more of a communication, right? And the two augment each other. So if one thing I've learned a long time ago is, and I, and I, I will guarantee you this, if anybody that, that watches this called me tomorrow and said, hey, I'd love you to come see me, you will get exactly what you get right here. Right. I, I don't That's have right. a... I don't have an on video persona. I don't have a, a, a recorded or live podcast persona. You get Randy, mainly because A, I believe that's the right way, but B, I'm probably not smart enough to have more than one persona. I get, I, you get me, like me or don't, you, right. you kind of get me. But, but that's what people want. And you know, you talk about like it shows some of the, probably the biggest fun I have at a trade show is to do walk and talk with people. Yeah. I, I love to just, you know, I mean, walk up and say, hey, you got, you got three minutes, five minutes? Go to a guy's booth. You know, let's, now I'm here with uh, whoever. You know, I, I mean, one of my favorites, probably I always do every year, is is uh, uh, Mark Staver with, uh, or Stover, I should, should say, with the president of Permacom. Uh, known him for years. We always stop in. We do a quick chat in front of his booth. You know, how's the show? We, we you know, a little BS back and forth. I do 8, 10, 12 of those a day from the show. Yeah. And it takes no time. It's two minutes. I'm going to stop and talk to him anyway. Let's just jump on and, and do a quick video. And it doesn't have to be rehearsed. It shouldn't be rehearsed. It's right. just, right. you know, Shannon, what do you think about the show? It's good. What's going on? You know, a little chat back and forth. and But it's all that personal stuff. Authenticity. I mean, people yeah. can read authenticity. I always say that people have a meter that yes. they can read that. And they can tell that if what you're saying is true or not. And it, for me, I'm very transparent. I would say maybe transparent to a flaw to the point where I always say, 
you know, if I'm having a conversation, probably 95% of it I'll have on this microphone. Mm -hmm. There's only a few things that I feel like are necessary to keep very um, uh, private, mm -hmm. not just for a first mover's advantage or a competitive advantage, but because they don't af offer any value, there's just no um, edification in that. Right. You know, that's just not need to be said. Right. You know, even if it's truthful. So there is a few things, but generally speaking, I, I agree, man. You, you know, I am who, who you see, and that's who I'm going to be yeah. over dinner. So I'm going to be when I get home. Yeah, exactly. I sit around a campfire. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's, you know, and I think people respond to that. And that in person communication is important. You know, just talking to someone recently about why they went with uh, one particular company over business on the other is as they got established. They had somebody drive to them to their location, see them, meet with them, talk with them, and spend several hours with them, and that sort of became the deciding factor. Exactly, and why they decided to do business with them. So that that's a true testimony from a real person talking about the thing we're talking about. Exactly, communication and and. Uh, Hello, Shed Seller. Do you feel like some days you are on an island trying to navigate through the complexity of perfecting your Shed Sales process? For years, the Shed Seller has often had the do the best you can standard. At Shed U, we want to help you make doing the best you can more than guesswork with a proven Shed Sales process. Shed U was created for you, the Shed Seller, and aims to help you, the Shed Seller, learn the best techniques for selling sheds. How do we do that? Elements of Shed University include shed education you deserve as a shed seller, such as sales process management, lead follow-up, and sales script development. But wait, there's more. Attending Shed U is double the fun because after you attend Shed U on January 23rd and 24th of 2024 at the Knoxville Convention Center, you can attend the Garage Shed Carport Builder Show on January 24th and 25th. That's right. All registrants for Shed U receive complimentary admission to the GSCB show, which includes even more educational opportunities. If you have been wanting to improve your shed sales process for yourself or your sales team, be sure to attend Shed University, the obvious choice to grow your shed sales. At Shed University, class is now in session. Gosh, I don't know. We could probably go a million different ways, but what, so what's some of the products that you sell now? I want to make sure, oh, I, I know you're probably going to be kind enough to say, oh, maybe I shouldn't do self-promotion and I'm going to tell you promote, 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 okay. go for it. Well, I, I am with all of ever, everything else I've said, uh, I am also a shameless self-promoter. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, has to, I, I still have no problem talking about okay, what I do. Okay. Very good. Cause I remember I love what I do and do what I love. Remember? So thank you though. Yeah. So I rep uh, SD fastening which is a, uh, one of the major uh, fastener suppliers and manufacturers in the country. Uh, so we do fasteners for metal roofing, metal buildings, uh, and a lot of the ancillary products, boots and closures and vent material. Uh, Marco Industries, which is uh, also a major supplier in the, uh, the vent they're huge in ventilation, uh, closure material, underlayments, uh, a lot of other, again, ancillary products and MWI components. Uh, out of Spencer, Iowa, we are, uh, really a barn or a post frame building component manufacturer. I'll have some things that transcend into the metal roofing residential world as well, but uh, barn door track, round and square, side rails, Dutch doors, barn doors, horse stalls, uh, bubble foil, all cupolas, all those kind of things. And uh, and then I do some, some, some stuff with the Isaiah Industries out of Pickle, Ohio, especially their uh, uh, Aqua Defender, which is a, a uh, uh, a factory applied with a roll former uh, a condensation barrier. Uh, window supply, which is my vinyl window company, and we supply those um, all over the U.S. And my most recent uh, thing I've got into, like I needed more, uh, and this is talking about people, uh, Flat Global Metals, which is a, a national, international uh, coil painted, pre painted coil manufacturer. And so I was. Never going to get into the coil business, but every one of my customers buy coil, or most of my customer target customer, my roll formers buy coil. Um, if you get down to the specs and the paint and all the things, a coil has to all match each other, right? It's I don't want to say coil is coil because there's some differences, but the key there was the people. I wanted to be with these people, and so that's what I do, and and uh, and so that leads me about 
with all that and my podcasting and my writing articles and blogging and now writing my book, uh, that gives me about exactly enough time to get my 75 hard exercise in a day. And that's it. Man, very, very busy guy. And a lot of guys that, uh, you know, not that 67 is owed by any means, but a lot of guys are like, you know what? I just want to sit around and watch TV and eat some potato chips. And you're like, no, we're not, okay. we're not living that life. Seriously. Just put me out to pasture and shoot yeah. me. And I'm not looking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, that is not, not a falling anybody. That's what they want. Yeah. For me, uh, I can work from home, especially nowadays, because I get to really work from home. I can do these sort of things. Mm -hmm. I can do four or five Zoom calls a day with customers. I can make videos. I can talk to customers via video or podcast or, or, or whatever. But um, if I get up every morning and get my coffee and stand and look out and say, man, it's another great day, and that's all I'm going to do the rest of my life, that's a long time. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I have, and people, you know, I just took on Flat Global at 67, which most people would say, well, you're just an idiot. Why are you doing that? Because I'm not on the slowdown page at all. And that's a part of, a lot of why I take care of myself and try to stay fit and eat right and do the right stuff is just good for you. Yeah. But I, I, the last thing I want to do is to want to keep doing this and can't do it. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't control certain things that happen, but I can control the fact that I take care of myself, so that's not going to get in my way. Well, if you do what you love and love what you do, it's going to drive you to constantly find a way to do that. Uh, a lot of people are, are like, you know, why do you enjoy doing this? Like, well, I just enjoy talking to people. Mm -hmm. I never knew that it would be a potential career right. for me to do that, but I enjoy, you know, so that's something that I do naturally. And there's some there's some truth to, you know, uh, find what you enjoy and you'll never work a day in your life. I mean, it, it, it does take on a different life whenever you're trying to do it for a living because you have to do it to right. provide income. So there's a little bit of, of a difference in, you know, collecting something on the side and then become on a professional in that. And, mm -hmm. and that's sort of what the podcast is, is, is done for me. It's given, I'm looking at a five year plan to try to keep this thing going. You know what I mean? And, and I just enjoy it. And I'm saying, well, if that's what God would have me do and the path that I should be on, then I'll do that. If I'm not supposed to, I'll, I'll do it. I'm supposed to, but yep. keep building trust, keep building relationships. Uh, love what you're talking about with like the coil and all that. Gosh, it just seems like more more shed guys I run into all the time, or you know what I mean, buying uh, um, into the into the company more so they can control their own products, whether it's a roll former or mm -hmm. or whatever. And it's really cool. Like our our other mutual friend Gary Riker, garage shed carport right. builder. They do the shield wall media, so they got frame builder. They've got uh, roll forming uh, right. magazine. That he's got a just a ton of stuff. Uh, it's cool to kind of see where one part of the industry ends and the other begins. And uh, it's just cool to be able to, to go to their shows as well. And I think they're doing Knoxville for, for the shed side exactly. of things. And yep. uh, uh, Knoxville Convention Center in uh, January. January, yep. yeah. I'll be there. Yeah, be man. We'll, we'll, I don't know. I may get a booth this year. Like uh, most of the trade shows that we're attending this year, or any of the shed hauler events and things like that, a lot of them we're bringing the equipment. But generally speaking, we're just Deanna's along with me. Uh, our little dog Lucy's along yeah. with us. We're just hitting the road, and we're actually trying to. Uh, I'm trying to introduce her to the industry more, so she understands just how big it is and where other parts come in, like post frame, pole barns, pole sheds, um, um, furniture. You know what I mean? Play right. sets. Uh, right. You know, there's so much. There is so much. And there's what's really cool is, as you kind of alluded to earlier, I think, is there is a big crossover. Yeah. You know, the crossover, the lines of blurred, I is the word I want right. to use, between the, the, the carport shed world and the post frame building world. In the past, they were two separate things yeah. completely. There's a lot of crossover there. Yeah. And, well, uh, even with softwares and things like that, mm -hmm. you're starting to see a lot of crossover where there's you know cross promotion for both products and right. things like that right. so and i think that's the maturing of an industry and that's growth and and that's really cool i know the post frame industry is very big i've got to go to the nfba shows mm -hmm. uh, the last two and i want to continue to do that and be able to attend some of the shows that gary's doing and all right. that it's just reason to always have your calendar booked up and full and exactly. trying to go to as much as i can network as much take in i encourage others uh, our listeners to go do that i encourage listeners to uh go listen to 
Randy Chafee's Building Wins. Go listen to Gary Bontrager's Mindset Growth. Hey, we're all in this together. We're so all, we are. You we know, are. we're trying to we're trying to build a bigger yes opportunity and, here and for everybody. We are, and 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 you know, it's an old axiom, I guess, but we 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 do all grow together. Yeah. You know, we we think we just run our own little on down our own little road. Yeah. But you know, I, I realize as hard as I think I've worked at what I do, and and I do think I work pretty hard. But I, I haven't done any of it on my own. There's always help along the way. And you help them, I help you, we help. And you help shamelessly and, and without expectation, as I said earlier. You just do that. And I don't know how many fold it comes back, but it's, whole, it's, it's a whole bunch of X's, right? 10X, 100X, 1,000X, I don't know. It's a lot of X's. It all comes back. I just believe in win-wins. I believe exactly. in win-win-wins. And I believe that if we can keep doing a win-win, Building wins, and we win, too. So we do. That's exactly. a lot of winning. That's a lot of winning. It's like Charlie Sheen level. It is winning. Charlie Sheen level. And I have a couple of Charlie Sheen shirts that I look quite good in. I bet. Well, I my bet. opinion. But yeah. <laughs> my wife, your not opinion, so much. Your opinion, it, it matters the most, right? Well, it does, so. except for when I come out wearing it to go out with friends. My wife says, are you wearing that? That's code, by the way. You yeah. know. Yeah. That's code for no, I'm not. I already turn around and just walk back. Now. Yeah. I don't even ask. I just turn around and go back. I don't closet. know. What was I, what was I thinking? You yeah, didn't I tell me yeah, what you're to right. think. I, I had a momentary that I wasn't thinking. You're right. If people want to get a hold of you outside of finding uh, you on Building Wins and everything else, what's some uh, ways of communication they can find you? Well, my, my website is very easy, and you can also find my podcast there, too. Uh, but my website's very easy. It's the only thing you actually need to remember is I buy from com. Oh, nice. Or dot .net. Okay. Or maybe dot something else too, but yeah. anyways, but I buy from Randy. That's that's the, the easiest way. Yeah, that'll get you the website. Uh, you can find me under my name or Building Wins on, on all the social platforms, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, the new one that I, was it? Not, not, threads? Or, threads, or, yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, I, um, and then uh, uh, on uh, YouTube, and uh, and like I said, uh, the, the, the uh, even the plain folk, uh, we have, uh, and I think I got this information from you. I think I use the same people. I, I would give them props. Right? You maybe can. I forget. M, M Tech. M Tech. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there is a number. It's on my website. Nice. I post it now and then. So if you don't have the real ability to get on the computer or on an iPhone, uh, you get down to the pay phone, you get to your driver's phone or whatever the case, you can dial this number and, and catch the show there. So Man, they have been just absolutely great. Whenever I was in New York recently, I got a chance to – to stop by and say hello to them and oh, appreciate you? all that they were doing. And, um, yeah, I might have even mentioned, like, you and Gary at the time, like, hey, there's more information out here, and if we can get more of that out to the playing communities and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if if, uh, if they want to listen and they're in that trade and they kind of want to find out more people and, and more networking, more, yes. more stuff, it's just it's a perfect way to do it. So, yeah, the call-in line, uh, I'm just tickled about. I mean, it's seeing, you know, four to 500 call-ins a week and nice. you know so that's really good because we're able to provide something that even though they don't use maybe a, a technology that's more modern like we would use there's a way to connect with them mm -hmm. uh and to be honest with you a lot of those guys that are uh we've talked about this for a long time and probably stopped at two or three places on the way up here playing community uh folks and you know a lot of those guys just want to be shed builders right you know what i mean they just enjoy that they're not trying to right on. get you know sucked into the technology and all that so they need someone they can trust and work with on that and we've tried to build that and establish that so that you know they feel like they have someone to go to who's gonna understand what they do yep. and honestly that's only came randy with like a lot of like trial and error mm -hmm. you know we we have two different cultures but we have some similar things and like our christian values but it's kind of like okay how do we work together Right. And how do we figure out what you do? And I've had to just out of ignorance, ask a lot of people a lot of times, Hey, I don't know the answer. So please right. show me some grace and mercy. And I'm going <laughs> to ask you questions that might be right. dumb or <laughs> I'm sorry mm -hmm. for those, but feel free to ask back exactly. and maybe we can learn and uh, you can still do some kind of work together uh, in a way that can be uh, satisfactory for all parties. So exactly. That's great, man. Well, we'll definitely put a link to your website or whatever. Yes, we'll absolutely. talk it over, Let's talk and, it over uh, and our newsletter will go out, and we'll make sure to do a bio and all that yeah. stuff. And so. anything that uh, you know, we talked about this earlier, but uh, anything that we can do to collaborate together is is a great thing because collaboration is an excellent, absolutely, excellent tool. Absolutely. Somebody told me recently, like, well, you know, what about if somebody else does a podcast? I'm like, well, what if somebody mm -hmm. else does a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Who cares? Exactly. You know what I mean? Like if it, if it can be successful, how do you, 
well, how are you going to respond to that by working with them? Mm -hmm. I mean, what else would I do? You know right. what I mean? Like we're, we can have our individuality and, right. and, and be taken care of, but we can still work together and maybe we can make a better situation exactly. rather than making it worse by bickering all the time. So right. if you want to know who me and Randy are, it's uh, where do we find areas to collaborate? Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. I'm, I'm all in. And I appreciate being on. Hey, appreciate, appreciate time, you man. making the run down here. Oh, I, I love watching you on Facebook. I'm so busy. I wish I could catch every single thing all the time. And uh, I try to go back and catch as yeah. many as possible. Well, love your energy. Love what you do. You're very inspirational. I hope that uh, in 20 some odd years, whenever I get to 67. Yeah, there you go. I can't, to bring that you know what? Again. I can't, I can't say nothing. You can walk further than I can right now. <laughs> You're out here walking 10 miles a day. I get two miles in and I'm huffing and puffing. <laughs> well, so. you know what? It's, it's, it, there's, a, I, 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 I don't get bored walking because I'm talking to customers Yeah. or spitball as I called it the other day. And, but you know, somebody else called it brainstorming. Uh, uh, actually Ben Gay sends me a thing. He says, well, we used to call that brainstorm. And I said, well, I call spitball. That's what I used to do in school when I was bored, which is all the time. Right. Throw spitballs at the back of the girl's neck ahead of you. And then she turned around and you got, what? I didn't do anything. It wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me. What are you doing? <laughs> Turn around. Pay attention. But uh, uh, I was from spitballing, ideas that popped in my head, talking to customers, or, um, you know, and, and maybe a final th thought for people that might want to do videos, more videos. What do I do? How do I do it? We talked her authentic, raw, and organic. Yep. And some of the best, in my opinion, and maybe most viewed videos, and I'm talking stuff that's not a, it's just popped up on social media somewhere, you know, is nobody's expecting them. They just let me run across it. Are, I didn't plan it when I headed out for the walk. I'm walking, I'm thinking, this idea pops in my head, hit the phone, you know, do the two minute video about something I'm thinking about. You know, some, because I guess if I get inspired, I've learned if I get inspired about something, because in my calendar every day, I have, there's three things that are in my calendar every day, but one of them at three in the afternoon, inspire. <clears throat> That's twofold. Have I got myself inspired for some reason yet? Because if I haven't, I need to do something mm -hmm. to make sure I've got inspired. And the other one has, have, have I inspired anybody else? Have I done anything to inspire somebody else? And we never know um, what we might say, what we might post, what we might do, a video we say, a, 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 a slogan in a video that might just catch somebody at the right time. Man, you are, you are like, I, I literally just put something out this morning. I think it was from a former pastor of ours that said, you know, there comes a time to have a backbone. There comes a time to, you know, a, allow some stuff to go by. And I, I really felt like I was living in that in my life because of, uh, I always like I, I collect like little incredible Hulk hmm. like statues yeah, because yeah. I understand you know what it's like to be Bruce Banner and be walked over and mm -hmm. just kind of be like oh I'll just be quiet won't say anything about it it'll pass by the best thing to do is just be sort of passive mm -hmm. and then the other reaction is incredible Hulk where right. you just like completely unreasonable don't hear reason can't calm down right. and so you got to find some way to navigate emotions through the process of business sales building relationship mm -hmm. you know what it's like to be an employee just interviewed somebody who said you know i was two years in hated my job 11 years in i love it because i stuck through it had right. to grow that emotional process exactly. and you know for me it's been sort of the same thing so trying to figure that out and uh, yeah uh, it's it's i love these stories i love these conversations we'll have a lot more of this off air yeah. believe it or not i've even got a zoom call coming up i've got another it. podcast later i got we're meeting tonight we're at meeting seven o'clock yep. life is good Life is really good, man. Appreciate yeah. everything you're doing. If I can help you, promote you uh, in any way, shape, or form, let me know. I will do in the same. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you, my friend. Thanks, Randy.